Hello, I'm Mark Bremer and will be your presenter through this series. And we cover a lot of good things. I mean, where everything is in the program, that's kind of what you would expect, right? Well, yes, it's a tutorial series. But more important than that, we cover the whys and the strategies of how you work with some of these tool sets because there is overlap. And when you work with some of the tool sets because you wouldn't want to use the same one in every situation. Additionally, Poser is not a perfect software and it's got some unexpected behaviors and sometimes even some little bugs. And we deal with those or at least look at how to deal with those things so you come out on top and work with the program successfully. Let's take a look at some of the things we do cover. New Features is one of those, and there's a very cool new feature called the Comic Book Renderer now. Poser's always had a comic book feature, but this one, especially if you're a graphic novelist, has a fantastic look and nice thing to use. There's also a new fitting room and some new clothing morph tools, which allows you to repurpose assets that you've got from one character onto another and custom fit them. Really cool stuff. One of my favorites happens to be the new bullet physics engine that's been engaged, which allows you to work with soft body dynamics, real-time feedback as you work with the program with that physics engaged. Now, you can apply it to cloth, but you can also apply it to people if you want. So we kind of, well, santified this person. And we've got a jiggly tummy, some jiggly pecs. Works for body parts, jello. It deforms tires as tires roll over the surface of things. Really cool stuff. There's also been some optimization, some new compound nodes in the materials room, which allows you to build complex textures like these. And all the assets that we have showing right here are also available on the tutorial series itself. So what else do we cover? Well, posing and props, you would expect that. But it's not about just bending characters. It's about working with props and engaging them with the environment around them in an easy, non-brain cell killing way. So we look at ways to restructure the scene so that the motorcycle actually has the character on top of it instead of the way Poser Default builds something like this where the motorcycle would be attached to the character and you have to move the character to move the motorcycle. Really common sense things like that. We also look at items like additional props. We've got modeled hair and their strand-based hair. When would you want to use those? We talk about that, render time implications, all those types of things that you really need to know and consider when you're building your scene. Also, the land of Poser is full of beautiful people, but sometimes we want some real-world grittiness, and we look at using the morph and magnet tools to change some of the characters into something that may be a little more suited to what you're working with at hand. Now, the materials room is very powerful. We cover how to work with character types of materials. We also look at ways to start consider using the procedural texture bases that we have to work with inside of the materials room or the capabilities for that. We look at ways of customizing existing character materials, like getting this character's teeth dirty. A couple simple modifications in the materials room. Nice way to repurpose those assets. But we also look at building custom assets, how you bring that in, and then actually use a lot of the powerful features inside of the Poser material room, like normal maps, displacement, things like that, so that you can get some really good looks for your subject matter. Now, the face room is a great tool to work with. You can bring in photos that you've taken yourself. You can download images off the internet and create some custom characterizations using that. So we cover that. We also go over the hair room and not only how to get hair on a head, but strategies for styling it, why you would break down skull caps certain ways to do things, how you style it and keep the style, but then assign a wind generator like we've done here to blow it in the wind a little bit for either still or animated features. We also do some real common sense types of approaches to the cloth room. We have a character here that actually has a stock cape that comes with him that has a bunch of morph targets to it that you can animate or make it look like it's blowing in the wind, but it doesn't animate well in the cloth room. So what we've done in this basic section is gone ahead and brought in a custom cape and animated that in the cloth room so it looks like it's actually blowing in the wind when we add a wind generator. But we've gone to an advanced stage beyond that. Poser ships with a bunch of fantastic stock clothing, but it's kind of stiff and doesn't look too realistic when you've got a character sitting down. So we look at ways to put that stuff on characters, that stuff being clothes, and then make it look like realistic clothing as well. Now, we cover lighting, but we take that out of how to point lights to how to consider which lights to use, why, and then we go one step further and say, let's start building scenery and story and mood with the lights. How do you reveal shapes of something like this vehicle without making it look like daylight? How do you let the viewer see what's going on, get an idea of the emotion involved? Just smart things with scene building like that. 
Now animation, a big part of Poser. We've got some nice layered animation capabilities, sometimes referred to as non-linear animation. The obvious keyframe animation method, which is common to all software that animates. And then some nice graphing controls to better guide and manage the animation that you have going on in your scene. We also take a look at Walk Designer, another tremendous time saver when you're working with creating characters that actually need to walk in place that you composite or that need to walk down a path in your scene. However, we keep pushing that a little bit further and look at some of the unexpected behaviors that happen when you try to add a prop, in this case a sword, to this little kid's hand. Sounds straightforward? Not quite as simple as you might think, but we look at how to deal with that. Also, we take a look at the Talk Designer. A favorite in the Poser world, if your needs meet the requirements that this outputs to, it's not a perfect tool, but for many types of circumstances, it's a good tool to work with. And we look at how to bring in audio, customize the interface a little bit so that you get successfully some nice animation out of that as well. But very important happens to be the setup room. In the real world, you're probably not going to be rigging a character, but you'll probably be importing things like uh, planes here or making doors open on something you might build in Google SketchUp. So we look at how to use the setup room for that and successfully get moving parts in your scene. We also look at rendering. It doesn't mean much if you can't get it out of the system. So in addition to looking at realistic types of renders and considerations, we also look at some of the additional features like something you would use for post-production if you're a videographer or a Photoshop wizard, how you can control densities with shadow masks, that type of thing. We also look at the sketch render, a nice feature, and we look at how to modify these sketches in real time with some of the tool sets that Poser has, as well as the final output with a preview method that we've got. Cool tools. There is so much going on. We cover so much more in this series. Hope to see you along for the ride.